Okay, in this video we are going to take a look at setting up Spring Boot with Cassandra. So Cassandra is a very popular in-memory database that is blazing fast. And so pretty common to use Spring with it. And in this, we're going to take a look at setting up a pretty simple Spring Boot application. All the source code that you're going to see in this video is available on GitHub out at my repository, GitHub Spring Framework Guru. And the repository is slash spring dash boot dash Cassandra dash example, just like I have on the screen there. So let's toggle over to IntelliJ and start stepping through this example. Now you can see here, I've set up a few properties for Cassandra. Cassandra does work off a, a key space. It's kind of sort of like a, a schema if you're coming from a relational database. So I am calling my key space guru underscore key space. Local host and port 9042 is fairly standard. And this uh, line eight, the default action create if not exist, I was not able to get that working properly, but I'll show you exactly how I did get it working here in the Cassandra configuration. So this is a, an important thing of getting things set up here for us. So I am setting up a final key string here, and it was here on line 24 that I got that create if not exist for us to work for the schema objects. Now, on line 29, this is where I actually create the key space, and I'm using Spring to do this. And on line 37, I'm also dropping the key space when Spring stops. And this is a, an optional behavior. You do not have to create it or drop it. But if you are using, if you're using more of a permanent installation of Cassandra, you probably wouldn't need to do this at all. But I am doing it for testing, so I am going to create a key space and also create my domain objects on the fly using this. So, but if you had a, a permanent installation of Cassandra, you might not be doing this at all. But this is the configuration for Cassandra. And you see also down on line 47, that's another important one. I'm telling it where the base packages are for the entities. So let's take a look at the entity. So it looks a lot like JPA. I am giving it a table name of products and pretty simple entity that we are working with. So it gets a, a UID, a true UID object for the primary key that's going to be registered inside of Cassandra. And then we have a description price and image URL, just a couple simple strings and then a, a big decimal for the price. Now, this is kind of a domain driven design very simple CRUD operation that we are, are talking about. And to work with this, I've set up a repository, CRUD repository, using product and UID. And this is right out of Spring Data. So I am using Spring Data for Cassandra. And by doing that, I only have to provide the product repository interface. And at runtime, Spring Data is going to provide the runtime implementation of this for us, so we don't have to write all that code. Spring Data is going to be handling all the repository functions, and for us, we just need basic CRUD functions on this. Now, in my application, I like to wrap that up in a product service, so I have a, a basic CRUD interface that I'm going to be using with my controllers. Remember, if you're doing Spring and dependency injection, always a good habit to be coding to an interface. And we can come over and take a look at the product service implementation. You can see there on line 20, I have declared the product repository, and I am using constructor-based dependency injection there on line 24. So I am taking in the Spring Data provided instance of the product repository. And then I also have a type converter of product form to product. So I have a product form in this project which is a command object, or some people like to call it a backing bean. So uh, I've got that being injected to do some simple type conversions for us. And you can see, I'm not going to step through each one of these, but like we have the product repository delete method. So all these are implemented to give us basic CRUD operations for products. Now, this, this service implementation gets injected into a, a Spring MVC controller normal Spring MVC controller, no big mystery here at all, I'm using pretty standard stuff as far as request mappings and how I'm doing the, the posts and saves. This is using Timeleaf 
So I am using Timeleaf here. So bringing up an example here. Now I do have a whole course on Timeleaf in Spring, so I'm not going to dive into this too much. I also have some free content up on my YouTube channel around Timeleaf in Spring, but this is a, a Timeleaf template that we're going to utilize. Now I am going to go ahead and start this. So I'm going to run this application, and while Spring is starting up, I am running Cassandra in Docker and so I've run it right to the, the console, I'm not running it in the background. And you can see here we have some chatter here about initializing the key space, Guru key space, and products. So we're going to get some chatter out of this. Well, let's take a look at the web application. Do a quick refresh here. There is no product to view. Let's go ahead and create one. And we'll just give it a simple URL. So there's no validation going on here. Um, it's going to take it, and I got an error. Okay, I've done and uh, gone ahead and did a little uh, research on what was going on here, and the problem was is that Cassandra does a time-based UID, so kind of telling me right there an invalid version, and by default, Spring Data is going to be using a randomly generated UID, which fails the uh, validation of a time-based UID. So quick search on that. I'm setting it to a regular UID here for the Cassandra driver and that should get us up and going again. I'm going to restart things. So I'm going to stop Spring application, come over here, I'm stopping uh, Cassandra and I am running it via Docker in a container so I'm going to bring that back up. So if you're not playing with Docker yet you should be and I do have a class coming out specifically on Docker. So a lot of neat stuff you can do with Docker. So we are got Cassandra almost back up. And he is up now. So let's come back over to IntelliJ and try this one more time. Go ahead and uh, start the Spring Boot application. And that's going to come up pretty quick. So we can see that that is back up. Now let's go ahead and see if we can I'll do a refresh here. Oh, cancel that. We don't want to re repost. So no products in the database. Let's see if we can go ahead and create one now. And there, that, that was the problem. So we are able to get products. So let's go ahead and step through this. Here's a, a list of products. Let's edit him. Just to prove that we can edit. And we can see that the values are, are in fact changing. So not, not too much on the, the web front end here. Pretty pretty simple web application. But again, to, just to recap what I, I changed there was this Cassandra type. So there's a, a time-based UID and a regular system-generated UID. So Cassandra's a little sensitive on that. I'm not going to get into the theory of generating random UIDs. Obviously the time-based one is probably going to be a little bit more finite, So, but I, I'm not going to get in, into that. The, the biggest thing was to set it up in regular UID rather than a time UID, which is the default of Cassandra. So just to, as a quick recap of the Cassandra configuration, a few properties here. Spring Boot is going to provide you a, a variety of properties, but you do want to set up your key space, your local host, port 9042. On line 8, the schema action I was not getting to work until I got into the Cassandra configuration and explicitly set that on line 24 as a schema action to create if not exist. And what this is going to do, just to, to recap, is if the product table doesn't exist inside of Cassandra, Spring Data is going to go ahead and create it. So, But in this way, we have Cassandra running in a Docker container, vanilla out of the box Cassandra, no configuration done to it, and Spring Boot is or Spring Boot slash Spring Data JPA is giving us everything that we need to connect to Cassandra, create our key space, and create our, our tables inside of Cassandra, very much like it would do with uh, Hibernate. So pretty pretty nice setup here. And uh, again, here on line 38, just as a reminder, this is dropping the whole key space. So something you probably don't want in a, a production system. I imagine bad things could happen from that, but again, this is just a, 
a play test and I am by no means an expert on Cassandra but it is a, a very neat technology and you can see how easy it is to get spring data and spring boot talking to uh, Cassandra.